Okay, so let's talk about putting the chassis together. So there's a couple of main components of the chassis. We've got the OLED screen. Um, we'll talk about decorating the chassis afterwards. Um, we got the battery contacts, the GX16 connector, the cap, and our speaker pods. Um, so I'll walk you through putting all these things together. Um, so the first thing is you're going to get your chassis from Shapeways either for the Profi, Verso, or CFX. And you're just going to want to, you know, inspect the chassis. I, I like because the chassis is visible. I like printing this in the premium plastic. I think it comes out really nicely and it fits well. Um, so that's what I would recommend is using the premium white or black plastic. Um, and uh, to, to get started, we're going to take our GX16 connector and we need the other half of it. So we're going to get um, our screwdriver and there's a screw on the side here that needs to get loosened. and we're going to need that screw so don't lose it and then this comes out by twisting and then pulling out following our pin out again the pins are numbered on both ends of the gx16 connectors so we're going to keep following our pin out when we solder this and when we get it all soldered together it's going to look something like this um, what we want to do is get each of these wires through that hole. And make sure they don't go up through the LED slot. And there's a nub in the chassis right here. And that nub it feeds into this channel here so it's got that twist lock feature so we're going to put line that up with the nub and then it'll slide right in and then twist it so i'm twisting that towards me and then you'll see when it's twisted that that hole lines up with where the screw needs to go so we'll get the screw in there down. You don't want to over tighten this because you are just screwing into the plastic threading of the GX16 cap so you don't, uh, you know, if you over tighten it you're going to strip those threads and then you'll need to get a new GX16 connector. Um, you want to look at it and make sure that this looks like it's pretty normal to this plane. You don't want it crooked or anything like that. Make sure it's seated properly. Um, once you've got this um, all together and you're pretty confident uh, that the build is not going to need to get stripped down or you know, you've know you got some problem that's going to cause you to need to take it apart, you could use a little bit of glue um, uh, to keep this in place a little bit more secure as well. Um, in this case, I, I use my cap, sort of a decorative cap, and again, I just kind of fit it into this space here and then add a little glue. So that allows me to like finish the build, make test it, make sure everything's working great, and then I can put the cap in at the end and just make sure that um, this is nice and secure and it's not going anywhere. And you can decorate it a little bit so that it looks nice. All right. Uh, once we've got that in and we're happy with it, the next thing to do would be to get the OLED screen in place. You're going to want to solder wires to the OLED screen ahead of time. So I'm using the OLED screen from the custom saber shop and I find that um, that works best. It's the one that I designed the chassis for. So it's the one that's going to fit. Um, so you're going to solder the four wires to this ahead of time. I didn't, so sorry about that, um, but we'll just pretend I did. And then that's going to slide into a channel here. So we're going to just be really gentle with it. And there's a little shelf 
right here that we need to get it into and you'll you'll feel it when it gets in there and then we can just push it into place um, If it's a little loose, um, I use just a little bit of glue um, to keep it to keep it in place there. Once we get this soldered and everything going, there's not going to be a whole lot of extra room, so we won't need to worry about that going anywhere. But right now, um, there's a lot a lot of extra space, and so it's moving around. Okay. The next thing that we're going to need to do is get the um, battery uh, tabs in place. So I uh, I got, I like uh, using the, uh, the leaf spring connectors. So this was designed to have a leaf spring connector on both ends. Um, the gold plated ones, you could use the silver ones if you like. I like the gold plated ones better. Um, and I've got a, a link to where you can get these. Um, you're going to get that connector, or sorry, that leaf spring, whether it's gold or silver, and um, the first thing you want to do is just make sure that it fits into this channel well. Um, sometimes during the printing process, a little bit of material gets stuck into these tiny little slots, and so really just pressing the battery tab through the slot helps kind of clear that up. Um, you to get this to fit into the chassis you're going to need to take some tin snips and you're going to need to cut this down just below these tabs here so we're going to cut just below those tabs and cut all of that off and then solder wires to the tabs so it's going to look like this so you can see i've cut these to be shorter i'm going to solder the wire to the inside of the leaf spring tab here and then I'm going to wrap it in heat shrink and that's going to that's going to do two things one it's going to help just um, isolate the uh, the metal contact from shorting with anything but it's also going to help give us a really nice friction fit to the battery tab um, if you find that it's a little too loose and you're not getting a good friction fit, I'm going to take the OLED out for just a second, um, then you might use a, a, a small bit of glue. So this wire we're going to feed up um, through here and we're going to want, want that bent a little bit like that. and. We should be able to just press that, yep, and push it in all the way. And what you want is that tab needs to be below the outer diameter of this connector because you don't want the tab touching the metal hilt, right? So it should be recessed about a millimeter there if it's pressed in all the way. Um, yeah. Okay, then we're going to need to do the pin in the back, and that'll slide in just there, just like that. This one is actually going to get bent, depending on your board, uh, on the CFX, this one's going to get bent sideways and then around like that to get over to the battery tab, but we can do that later. And the last thing that we need to put in there, again, this needs to be pushed in all the way um, and make sure that it's nice and snug so that it doesn't come out when we're pulling the battery out. So again, it should be nice and snug. If you find that it's a little bit loose, um, you could use a, a thicker uh, heat shrink or just a little bit of glue should be fine. It, it's not gonna be under a lot of force. Um, we're gonna need to get the um, pogo pens in there 
so it might actually be easier to put those in first. So the pogo pins are going to come in like this and they're going to have a slot up here off to the side that those wires are supposed to go into. We'll just hold that in place like that and then put the battery tab back in. There we go. And then push those pins in place. All right, so those are the speaker contacts and the battery tab. When it's time to get all of this soldered together, you're gonna have all these wires sticking out the bottom. I like to feed them all down through the bottom here. Um, I like to wire everything to the underside. So we're gonna have them all under here. Um, the, <coughs> excuse me, battery contacts, the speaker contacts are gonna be on the top though. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna end up doing is connecting the two power uh, wires, which are these two red wires. So we're gonna connect those. We're gonna try to connect them uh, here into one wire and then have the one wire lead back to the battery contact in the back here. And the rest of them don't need any special attention. Um, I don't have an extra CFX, so I've got this old prism that fits as well, so we'll put that in there. Um, so we'll put our board in place, and then you'll notice that we've got room to see uh, on the CFX all the contacts are around the edges here, so we'll have room to see those um, solder pads. And any solder pads that we can't reach, we can just kind of shift the board just a little bit. But the main idea is that, again, we're going to hold the board in place, or sorry, we're going to hold the, the chassis in place using the PCB holder. and then use a pair of helping hands in addition to some tweezers and get each of the wires. We're gonna cut them to the right length because we don't have a lot of extra room for tons of wire here. So they're gonna need to be close to the right length, maybe with just a little bit of slack. And then um, we can solder it in place here. And what's gonna really help with getting that right is getting the board positioned somewhere where it's close to its final resting position. So shifting it sideways just a little bit to get those contacts. And then the, con the slots here allow you to get to most of the contacts that you need. Um, so you can just solder them right in place from the bottom.